This is Matt for Into Boxing. Delighted to be joined by one of the best prospects in this, well, what we've got at the minute, Gary Cully. Gary, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, pal. No problem, no problem. Last time we spoke, I think it was after the Miguel Vasquez fight, you produced a devastating knockout, um, really announced yourself on the big stage. Um, since then, things have been a little bit quiet. What's what's going on? When can we next ex expect to see you back out? I'm not too sure, pal. Yeah, things have been things have been quiet for me as well. I've just been training away in the gym and uh, waiting to hear of my next date. So that's where I'm at now. I'm just I'm in the gym and I'm I'm training and I'm ready to go. And I put a tweet out yesterday saying I'm ready whenever. And that's how I'm just living life at the moment. I'm uh, I'm in the gym and I'm just waiting on a call. And, and as soon as I get that call, I'm ready to rock. Have you had time to look back on that performance now and sort of grade yourself on how you think it went? Yeah, um, I think I think it went well because I I dealt with the occasion and the the step up of class. I think I always knew of of the performances I can put in and and, and the skills that I have. But mm -hmm. it's another thing dealing with big occasions, dealing with big crowds, dealing with big fights, dealing with step ups in opponents. And it was my first kind of show on the big scene where there's cameras in your face all the week from from fight week, from interviews, press conferences, weigh-ins. Like it's a it's a very big deal, and I, I seem to, uh, yeah, I, I dealt with it quite well, and I felt I felt like I I felt like I've matured a lot, in, in and I've, I've gained lots of experience from them. But like I said, the performances and the the boxing, the skills and stuff, I always knew they were there. But it's just the the experience of the big fight weeks and stuff like that. But that's when I, uh, that's when you see the best of me. That's what I believe I'm made for is the biggest night. So. Yeah, you dealt with it well all week, to be fair. And you came to the ring, I remember thinking, I wonder if you are going to be nervous, but you looked, you know, cool as a cucumber making that ring walk, and obviously you delivered. Eddie's Eddie's always said, I use this phrase a lot, winner stays on. Like, you impress, you do well, get you back out kind of thing. Are you surprised that there's been no contact or no, like, look, we get you back out quickly kind of thing? Are you surprised? Kind of in a way, yeah. Um I, I I thought afterwards I probably probably stole the show. It was probably the the performance of the night. Obviously Lee Wood had a had a massive win over Michael as well. But um I thought I put in one of the best performances of the night. And obviously I wasn't signed to match on beforehand. And I definitely thought I'd be I'd get a call soon enough or or we we'd speak at least. But uh yeah, things have been quiet, but there's been a lot going on behind the scenes as well. And my management have been working and uh, we, we are looking at, at different options and stuff. But I was surprised that that the zone that Macho weren't in touch for. Like you said, I, I put out a, a tweet on an Instagram on an Instagram story the other week saying he said that winner stays on and I didn't remember losing. So uh yeah, I was a little bit surprised to be honest. But I, I believe like I, I believe the position I'm at now, I have everything that it takes. I'm I'm quite high in the world rankings in two of the governing bodies, WBA, WBO. All I need now and all I'm lacking is the the promotional backing and the big backing. And once I get that, the sky is the limit. I believe if I can if I can get to the States and get a fight over there, I'm the next the next Irish one to do Paddy's weekend or Paddy's Day over there in Madison yeah. Square Garden like we've seen Katie did this year. Um I believe I'm the next one, the next kind of I know Conor McGregor was in a different sport, but Framptons, Katie Taylors, I believe I'm the next one to take over. If I can get yeah. to the States, I believe I'll blow up. So I'm just waiting on that promotional backing, you know? Yeah, I'm going to say, you've had the likes of um, Mick Conlon do it as well in Madison Square Garden as well. Yeah. Uh, the Irish yeah. boys. So that's, um, is that what you're looking at? You want that sort of breakout moment in the States as well as part of it, wherever you go promotionally? Yeah, I believe, I've always said, I believe once I get, once I get to the States, I believe I'll blow. Um, there's a lot of lot of Irish in New York and Boston yeah. and Chicago and more Irish over there than there is in Ireland. Like so it's just about getting over there and, and showing what I'm about. They're into their boxing over there. I can I can speak well, I think. I can sell myself. I, I've got the diva pink. I've got I've got everything it takes. I'm just wait I'm just waiting on that that promoter to come in and, and to back me and to show some belief in me and, and get behind me. But that will come. I believe I've I've got the talent to do so. So I'm just waiting on that promotional backing, and I believe it will come. I think many people when they talk about you can't believe what weight you fight at. 
just because of your frame and size and like, is he fighting at lightweight? Like, yeah, 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 he's fighting at lightweight. And it's like, yeah. Um, and I, I, I used to get it, you know, as uh, I was, uh, people weren't so surprised because I was always quite skinny. I was always very tall, but I was very, very skinny. But the last couple of years now, I'm starting to fill into my frame a little bit. And I probably look like on fight day, I probably look like I'm a middleweight, maybe a little bit more. I remember somebody looked at me actually in Nottingham in the lift on fight day and said, did you weigh 135 yesterday? And they couldn't believe that I was that I was lightweight because I'm, I'm filling into the frame a little bit more now as well. Like I'm punching. Yeah. I've got that physicality behind me now as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, talking of lightweights, so there's been a big couple of weeks when you look at what's going on in boxing. Um, Devin Haney's gone to Australia and beat Cambosis Jr. We've had Javante Davis uh, put on a devastating knockout against Roller. What do you, yeah. start, start with Devin. What, do you, what did you make of Devin's performance? He went and put on a disciplined display over there. Yeah, if you if you see my tweet from last Thursday or Friday, the day before, somebody asked me how I thought it was going to go, and I said that I thought Devin was a, a level above, and I said in an interview with IFL last week that skills pay the bills, and I thought that Devin was going to show his skill set and that George wouldn't wouldn't be able to deal with that, and that's exactly what happened. I thought he, he fought a great fight, very mm-hmm. disciplined, um, probably could have tried to go through the gears a little bit more and, and get him out of there, but at the same time, you're in a fight for undisputed. You yeah. just want to win. The, the, the main thing there is getting the W and getting out with, it, with all the belts, you know. So he did that and uh, fair play to him. I thought his performance was excellent. Um, Cambosis obviously had a good night against Lopez and then he couldn't do it again against Haney. But yeah, I think Haney, Haney showed that, that he's he's one of the top dogs definitely at lightweight for, for sure. Yeah. Do you think he gets a bit too much criticism? I remember, obviously, for years he's been when since he got basically given or elevated to champion status, he's been trying to make fights. And then when he's had his big moment, he's outboxed him maybe ten rounds to two, maybe eleven rounds to one. However, you just want to score it, and then people say straight away, "Oh, this was boring." Do you think that's a bit that's a bit harsh? Because he's literally boxed the socks off um, a world class opponent like in his backyard. Do you think it's a little bit harsh that criticism? Of course. People just love to complain, though, don't they? They'll oh, always find something to, something to pick at. You know, if you're if you're a boxing purist, I, I got up on a Sunday morning and watched that fight, and I thought it was a clinic, like you know. But if you're yeah, yeah. if you're into bloodbaths and wars, you, you won't like that. If you're a casual, you won't you won't really be into that, and you'll probably say he's boring and he's this and he's that. But his skill set, his discipline, the, the little things that you don't notice, the feints, the jab, the, his foot position, it was all it was all on point for him on a. He completely nullified Combosis' game, you know. So credit where it's due. He's only 23. He went over with no promoter and went over to, to Australia into yeah. into George's backyard and put on that performance. So you have to give him credit for sure, you know. Um, the other side to that, we saw Giovanni and Roly Romero. That ended with a blistering knockout. Um, Roly started well. I mean, he, he sort of backed up. But I think... I don't think people thought it was going to be as sort of competitive as it was for how long it went, but eventually Javante sort of walked into that shot. What did you What did you make of that performance? Well, I actually didn't see that full fight yet. I just seen the the KO to be honest. But I heard Rowley was nicking a couple of rounds, and it was it was quite tight before uh, mm. before the knockout. But I think that was always going to happen. Javante kind of takes a couple of rounds. He starts a little bit slow, figures it out, gets his distance, and then lets off that big. That big explosive shot, you know, and once he only needs one of them, yeah, he gets yeah. one of them, and and it's a twelve round fight, and he only needs one of them. He got he's got that equalizer, you know, he's got explosive, uh, explosive hands. So, yeah, I think I kind of always expected that to happen. Rollies is explosive as well, and he's got a little bit of power, but his technique and his skills are a little bit lacking for the top level, I believe. So, um, Gervonta's definitely the real deal. Haney's the real deal, um. And there's some massive fights out there for me and for everybody else in the lightweight division. Yeah. So for you now, when you look at that and you look at the levels, obviously Haney put on that performance, Javante has shown what you can do again. How far do you feel you are off sort of competing at that level in the mixture with all them guys? I believe skill set wise, I'm right there right now. Um winning on both has went, I think, 28 and uh, Javonda maybe twenty when twenty six and you know, against beating Rollies. I'm fourteen and you know, at the minute. You know I've had 
won eight rounder, which has went the distance. I've had three or four ten rounders, which haven't went the distance. So I've I've fought eight rounds as the long as I've went once, and then I've had a couple of six rounders. So probably I think one, maybe two more fights of Vasquez level, and then a little bit higher again, and then and, and then I'm right there. Like um, I believe by the end of this year, I'm ready to challenge for a title, win a belt, and and get involved in the big fights. When you look, obviously, Rowley's just lost the tank, but would you look at a fight with Rowley and maybe say, obviously, he was doing okay, would that be sort of an ideal fight for you to go into? He's got a bit of a name now as well, and if you obviously fancy yourself as being in there with the mix of the best, then he's the type of opponents you'll have to go through as well. So would Rowley be an option? Of course, Rowley's combosis as well, after losing to Devon the yeah. other night is another one. Um, Garcia for Juna is coming up soon as well, the winner and loser of that one. Fortuna maybe soon. I put out a tweet a while back saying Fortuna might be a good fight for me soon. So uh, you've got them three names. You've got Maxi Hughes, Ricky Burns. You've got the yeah. lightweight division in in UK and, and Ireland is stacks as well, you know. So there's so many names there and so many big fights for me. So it's just about getting the right fight. Like I said, getting the promotional back and getting somebody behind me that can get me these type of fights on the big platforms to, to kind of explode my name as well. Um, because I believe when I get these big fights and put in big performances against bigger names, it's uh, it's only going to make make my profile yeah. grow bigger as well. And I need that promotional backing to to kind of go bigger and and get where I, you know. What's what's the hold up? This is what I don't get with you. Like not the boxing side of it. You're doing your bit, but after that performance, I was I was thought well, a few weeks would be a little announcement. You'd be signing up with. We're, we're probably a match from so obviously you perform on there or you'd be signing with something. What what do you believe is the hold up? Why is it changed? I'm puzzled. I, th- I sit back sometimes I think about it myself. Like, I believe if, like, I'm so good. I believe I'm so good and I'm looking at other people getting signed to promotional contracts or fighting on match and I'm going, like, either I'm delusional and I'm not as good as I think I am or <laughs> something's up like because I'm putting in these big performances I'm like right there's gonna a promoter's gonna come knocking on the door now and it hasn't happened yet so I was like Eddie just needs to see me then so Eddie, Eddie just needs to see me and see what I'm about and then and then we'll see what happens so then I got on the show and put in the performance I did against Vasquez and, and still haven't heard much so look I'm just going to do my part and control what I can control. Stay in the gym, stay ready. Um, like I said, I fought back in March. I was ready to go again at the start of April because I was buzzing after that performance and I just yeah. got straight back, went to Dubai for a week with the missus and then came back and uh, straight back to the gym and straight back getting ready. So I'm, I'm ready to go again. Um, like I said, I'm just waiting on the opportunities and as soon as the, I've, I've kind of lived my whole career like that, I'm just waiting on opportunities. As soon as the opportunity comes, I say yes, I pounce on a put in a big performance mm. and just wait for the break. The break hasn't come yet, but I, I fully believe that it will come and it will come soon. Yeah, it, it, has, yeah, it has to come. Um, I'll speak, well, whoever I speak to next, whichever promoter it may be, might drop your name in and just say, oh, you know you know, Gary Fuller, surely you must know him. See, see if you get You need to, man, you need to, yeah. I'm sure they all know. They have been, Eddie was sitting Vasquez, you know, so he knows where we were. I don't know. Maybe I'm the boogeyman. Yeah, but surely someone wants to sign that, the boogeyman, don't yeah, they? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? But well, I think if, if anyone wants the next Irish star to go to America and do these big Paddy's Day events in uh, in Madison Square Garden and have the Irish-American kind of contingent selling out MSG, I think I'm the only person for the job, to be honest. Yeah, well, so, we'll, we'll see. Um, I need to get your opinion. See. I will get your opinion on something else. Um, Nito Donaire has just gone against Inoue in the last hour or so before we spoke. Have you seen the result? Have you managed to watch? I, I, see, I just seen the result on Twitter that Inoue KO'd him, but I didn't see the video or anything yet. Yeah. Um, brutal KO or yeah, just, was it a bad KO? He's just, he's just think, um, a frightening human being, like punches with bricks in both hands. Just, just and he's so it. small, man. Inoue is just, he's a scary man. He's, a, he's just, pound for pound one of the biggest punchers in boxing, I think. Yeah, we're going to say, what What do you make of him? Have you watched much of him over the past few years? He's making a lot of noise going about his business, but I can't think he'll have a queue of people wanting to fight him either. Yeah, I, I watch bits of him, um, and I watch bits of him training as well. I see a couple of training videos and stuff, and like I said, he's he's scary. He genuinely is scary. I, I'm more 
I would be more wary of him than some of the heavyweights and some of the bigger guys out there because he's got dynamite in his hands and when he hits people they seem to just fall like um pound for pound he's up he's up there and my he's definitely in my top five pound for pound anyway he's uh he's scary good I think he's I think he's scary good but like you said he's not going to have a queue of people signing up to fight him now either is he no I don't I wouldn't fancy it and I'm one three five <laughs> who's who's pound for pound number one then you mentioned there they being your top five who have you got number one? Oh man I can't I t- is it still Crawford or Spence no. Crawford or Spence whoever wins that is pound for pound number one that has to go ahead and whoever wins that who do you think wins it Ah, uh, I'm Team Spence one week, and I'm Team Crawford the next week, and I'm Spence. It's the it's the one fight. I, it's genuine 50-50 I'll sit on the fence. I can't pick a winner of that one. Okay. And I, I'm a big fan of both of them. I watch both of them. They're both so pause. I, I I watch both of them. Uh, yeah. Study both of them and try and learn from them. But it's it's so close. It's so such a good fight. Is it right now? I'd lean towards Crawford today, but ask me tomorrow. It's different. No worries. Well, um, look, we'll ca- we'll catch up again soon. Hopefully, you get a fight week announced, and we'll do all this all over again. But yeah, fingers crossed, you get back on a show. A hundred percent, pal. I look forward to catching up with you at the next fight week as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, thanks for taking time out of your day. I know you're a gym rat, and you're always out and about training. So, I'll, yeah, uh, back to I'll... the gym now for the evening session. So. Oh God, I let you. I let you get back to it. Appreciate your yeah, time, bro. Thank you. See you in a bit, Ari. Cheers, See you, man. Bye-bye.